Hi, I'm Aaron Tobias. I'm a FAA DER flight test pilot. I've been working in the engineering and flight test business for nearly 20 years, certifying and developing numerous different aircraft models. And recently, I've had the pleasure of working with innovative solutions and support on developing and certifying the ThrustSense auto throttle system for the Beach King Air Model 300. With this system installed in your King Air 300, you'll find significant benefits over the, the standard aircraft uh, installation. Four main benefits that I've experienced in flying the system over the past uh, several months is, first of all, a noticeable enhancement in safety of operations. The way that that is accomplished is in a couple of key ways. Number one, reduce pilot workload through nearly all phases of flight. Where flying turboprop aircraft, folks know that setting power can be a high uh, workload task throughout other phases of uh, required flight activity. Additionally, the, the auto throttle system will provide envelope protection to ensure that you don't get too fast or too slow. And even if you have an engine malfunction, an engine failure in flight, the system will help protect the pilot from an inadvertent speed excursion below minimum control speed. Next, you'll notice and your passengers will notice a significant reduction in noise coming from the aircraft. While the noise levels aren't reduced per se, it's the sharpness of the power changes that result from a manual application of the throttles too slow or too fast that makes it noticeable that uh, you're flying a turboprop. So you end up with more of a jet-like environment in the cabin of this aircraft with very smooth power applications uh, powered by the electronic engine controls through the ThrustSense auto throttle. And lastly, instead of the pilot having to worry about not over-temping or over-torquing the engines uh, through a given phase of flight, the thrust sense is taking care of that. And the final benefit that I've noticed on board the aircraft is my pilot workload is being reduced, is the reduced likelihood of engine exceedances by manually setting power. With the electronic engine controls taking care of protections from over-temp and over-torque, you're likely to see benefits in reduced maintenance expenses associated with those potential events. Let's go have a look on board the aircraft as we take a flight in the King Air 300 with the ThrustSense auto throttle system installed. Okay, so uh, guys, for the uh, the auto throttle and uh, standby display system, uh, at this point we'll, we'll do uh, all arm takeoff mode. And uh, the way we're going to do that, reach up here and press the auto throttle power button. So when I do that, it goes into AT takeoff mode and it shows power for today is 79% plan takeoff power. Now if I'm going to take off with anti-ice on or bleeds off, then the system is going to recognize the state of those switches. So right now we have bleed air valves open, anti-ice off. So let's select bleed air valves off and you'll notice a change in the target takeoff torque value associated with the change in bleed air switch position. Similarly, if I turn the engine anti-ice system on, the auto throttle torque target, once the engine anti-ice comes all the way on, will change to the appropriate value from the flight manual. And there it is, 76%. And then if we turn bleeds back on now with anti-ice on, you can see yet another change in the target torque value for takeoff. So the system is armed for the configuration desired for takeoff. So today we're going to take off with any ice off and bleeds on. And we'll set brakes for a static takeoff. All right, so I'm going to start bringing power up. I'm going to press the go around button on the left throttle. We'll notice the throttles are increasing. Looking for a target torque value of 79%, confirmed from the flight manual for today's temperature. Okay, we 
we see takeoff, torque is set, and brake release. As we accelerate on the takeoff roll, as you would expect, the torque slowly increases as the throttles are staying put and the airspeed increases, resulting in an increase in torque. So five minutes after takeoff now, we'll be watching for the auto throttle system to transition into climb mode. We took off at 1437 on the clock. Like the yaw down? Yes, please. Now the auto throttle only controls the throttle levers. So for a normal takeoff and climb, we're going to pull the prop levers back to 1600 RPM. And when we do that, normally you would have to reduce the throttles manually first so as to not over torque the engine. Sundance traffic, bearing 92 Hotel Julia, 8 mile final runway 18, full stop, Sundance. But with the auto throttle system installed, you can slowly bring the prop levers back, and the system is going to recognize what would otherwise be an increase in torque, and it's going to adjust the throttle levers automatically to ensure no over torque condition exists. All right, so now we're just waiting for the transition at five minutes. Currently, we're in auto throttle takeoff mode, and it's driving to an 80% torque from the takeoff table. In most operations, the pilot's going to intervene within that first five minutes and manually select a torque or a speed mode for climb, but uh, in case he doesn't, this will protect his engines from exceeding flight manual limitations for takeoff power of five minutes. Another 30 seconds, we should see the transition from takeoff to climb mode indicated on the standby display unit. And you'll see the commanded torque value change from takeoff torque value of the current 79 to 80% up to the normal takeoff climb schedule. There's the climb transition to auto throttle climb mode. And you'll notice that the torque target on the screen is indicated to 100% and the throttles immediately started driving towards that 100%. However, given the conditions of today, as warm as it is, the system automatically recognized that it reached the maximum ITT limit before reaching the target torque value of 100%. So as indicated on the bottom right-hand corner is ITT, because the system is targeting the AFM limited ITT. At this point, I can change the target torque value using the knob on the SDU. So we'll just dial that in to maybe a lower torque value, let's say, let's say 80%. As soon as I do that, the throttles are going to come back to target 80%, and you'll notice the ITT flag in the bottom right corner of the SDU is now gone. To disconnect the auto throttle, we simply press the disconnect button on the right throttle or the power button up on the SDU. So we'll look at each one of those. So using the disconnect button on the right throttle, when I press that, we'll get an oral disconnect coming from the avionic system telling us the auto throttle is disconnected. And then we'll acknowledge it with a second press of the same button. Auto throttle. Auto throttle. And if it's acknowledged, the amber message is, open, is gone and as the amber light extinguishes. To re-engage end flight, it's a simple press of the AT power button, indicated by the green line here, as well as the green enunciator above the pilot's PFD, showing an AT engage. Currently in commanding torque mode, the pilot can select up to the engine limits, any torque value he would like. If I select 50%, we were previously at 80, then the throttles are going to come back and target that new value. All right, so we're going to work on a descent now. We 
we'll go back down to 4,000 feet. And while we're doing that, we'll set up to demonstrate one engine in operative mode. The torque command at 50%. And now I want to select an airspeed target instead of a torque target. To switch to airspeed mode, I'm going to press the knob on the controller and it's going to change to speed mode reference and I'm going to use the use the uh, autopilot speed control knob to select the speed target that I want to fly to. So, and that will match the speed indicating on the pilot's flight, primary flight display as well. So we'll set it up for 120 knots and allow the autothrottle to capture and maintain 120 knot speed. We're going to go ahead and configure the airplane for landing as we set up to demonstrate engine in operative mode. So you'll notice as I configure the airplane with increased drag from the landing gear and flaps, the auto throttle continues to maintain that 120 knot target speed. Right now we have flaps approach and gear down, and it's holding 120 knots, and it requires about 34% torque to do that. I'm going to go full flaps now. As the flaps are moving to full, you'll notice the power has to increase in order to maintain that 120 knot target. Very useful when flying an approach procedure at a constant airspeed. All right, so from this point, uh, Brad will be uh, moving on into the engine shutdown, which will be over in, uh, I think it's uh, A1 on the uh, red one. Okay, just to review, uh, we're going to initiate go around mode by pressing the go around button. Once the power comes up, auto feather will be armed. We're going to shut down the left engine with the fishing lever. I agree. You ready? Yes, sir. Go around. It's engaged. Oh, wait, the power okay. stabilized. Oh, left, turn cut off. Face lever. Yep. Cut off. Okay, we'll confirm. Prop feather. Prop feather. It's expected. Go left, lead off now. Left engine. All right, so when we did that, the auto throttle automatically went into an engine out mode. Again, currently it's limiting to ITT to protect the engine to max limits. If we were a colder day, it would be a torque limit, but it's enunciating as such. Right now, we're above minimum control airspeed, 103 knots. We'll start, start a slow deceleration. And as we decelerate through approximately 94 knots, AFM, minimum control speed, the display will switch over into BMCA uh, engine out mode protection. So there it's transitioning. At that time, you'll notice the right throttle is moving back, as is the right engine power indications. So now I am 10 knots below minimum control speed. The airplane is doing just fine. The right throttle has automatically come back through 70% power there. Since I shouldn't be here in the first place, I've now realized my error. I'm lowering the nose to accelerate. And when I get back above VMC speed, the power automatically starts coming forward to give me best possible performance and climb rate for the conditions. Now this next demonstration, you'll see that uh, the system is capable of providing a power reduction uh, to allow for excursions as slow as uh, stall warning on the airplane. So I'm going to go ahead and decelerate the airplane back towards stall warning. Through VMCA, right throttle is coming back automatically. So it's 
providing maximum available power for the airspeed, which is significantly below BMC at this point in time. There's a stall horn. And now using normal stall recovery techniques of just lowering the nose and allowing the airplane to reduce the angle of attack and fly out of the stall, throttle automatically returns to a max power setting. And we can start cleaning up for a safe climb out at the target. All right, one three three nine five. We got you. Good twenty eight ten. Uh, single engine climb speed. And once again, the right throttle is indicating maximum available power based on the ITT limit for today's temperature condition. That demonstration is complete. Leads are off, generators off, left starter. Okay. Here we go. Introduce the for you. Left start. Fuel flow. Off. Oil pressure. Auto throttle. Auto throttle. Big 62. Good start. Props coming out of feather when you're ready. Go ahead. All right, so now we're back in a normal climb phase of flight. Two engines operating. We can engage the auto throttle. And this time we'll engage it in a speed mode. And put the autopilot in a flight level change climb. All right, so we're established in a flight level change mode uh, autopilot commanded climb. I've got the auto throttle selected for speed mode. If I attempt to engage the auto throttle in speed mode while in a flight level change climb, the auto throttle will not engage. Pressing the engagement button. Auto throttle. I get a disconnect message auto throttle. and an oral indicating it will not engage. Now I can switch to torque mode by pressing the knob selecting maximum torque that uh, I'd like to try to target. If I can, within engine limits, I'll re-engage the auto throttle. And now it's pushed the engine up towards that value, but recognized the ITT limit won't let it go any higher. If I want to use a speed mode for the climb, then I can use uh, vertical speed on the autopilot or pitch mode on the autopilot. But flight level change mode for climbs or descents with the auto throttle in airspeed mode will not work. So here's vertical speed on the autopilot, reselecting airspeed mode now. And so now the auto throttle is going to command 180 knot climb, while the autopilot commands a vertical speed rate climb. Let's go ahead and slow our climb rate, our climb speed down. So maybe 150 knots. Increase our climb rate a little bit. You'll notice the autopilot is maintaining the same climb rate, while the auto throttle has reduced the power levers back to achieve the 150 knot target speed climb. All right, I'm going to select it back to a torque mode and demonstrate underspeed protection while we're in this climb. So if I've selected a torque value that's too small for the flight conditions that I've asked for, so I've asked for 20% torque and I've also asked for a thousand feet per minute uh, climb from the autopilot. But the airplane just can't do it. Physics won't allow. As the airplane slows to within 10 knots of predicted stall speed, the auto throttle is going to automatically switch from torque mode to a speed mode. It's indicating under speed. It 
it's still indicating torque mode, but under speed is the controlling mode currently. After having been in under speed for more than three seconds, it's going to switch automatically to a speed hold mode of uh, stall speed plus 10 knots, which is the minimum threshold, plus three knots for additional safety margin. In straight and level flight, that speed will maintain constant there. And if I want to manually try to select the speed less than that, it won't let me select anything less than that predicted stall speed plus seven knot, or plus ten knots. They indicate 107 knots for today's weight condition. As you know, if you enter a, a turn, your stall speed will increase with a bank angle. So the system accounts for that as well. So I'll go ahead and command a turn. As the airplane banks into a turn, you'll notice the target speed on the auto throttle increasing from that 107 knots as required for the bank angle and load factor associated with the turn to ensure protection from stall. Once that speed has increased, it's going to stay at that higher speed even if you level out. In the event that the pilot decides that uh, for some reason he needs immediate control of the uh, airplane, he can either disconnect the auto throttle with the button as previously illustrated or simply push the throttles to where he wants them to go. I'll demonstrate that by pushing the throttles up to increase our climb from this slow climb state. So manually just push the throttles up and hold them wherever your desired power setting is. Once the pilot releases the throttles after that manual override condition, the auto throttle will automatically take the throttles back to the previously commanded position. All right, I'm gonna switch back to torque mode and to high speed to demonstrate overspeed protection. First, we'll do that with flaps. So I'm gonna select flaps approach And the system right now recognizes that the flaps have been extended and it will not let the airplane accelerate beyond the 202 knot maximum limit speed for flaps in the approach position. We'll induce a descent to allow the airplane to accelerate towards that limit speed a little quicker. Right now we're on an ITT limit in torque mode, so it's giving me max available power for today. As it approaches the flap speed limit, in the bottom right corner you'll notice the indication of flap will appear. The throttles will switch into a speed protection mode. So over speed associated with the flaps. Beyond three seconds in the overspeed, it's changed the target speed value to 199 and indicating the reason for it is flap in the bottom right corner. And the same thing would happen in the landing flap configuration. I'll go ahead and retract the flaps. I'm gonna reselect a torque mode now that the flaps are up, we'll look at the same thing in a high speed over speed protection. Right, as the airplane accelerates towards maximum speed, the auto throttle will recognize the overspeed condition. After 
three seconds in overspeed. The speed target has changed from 263 as the maximum speed to 260. And now it reverts to speed hold mode at 260 knots. So to disengage the auto throttle, button press on the right throttle. Auto throttle. Auto throttle. The oral disengage indicator, as well as the visual disengage disconnect indication. Acknowledge it by pressing the button on the right throttle again. And then to re-engage, auto the throttle power button. Once again, to disengage. Auto throttle. Auto throttle. And you can also acknowledge it by pressing the knob. Re-engage. And then lastly, you can disengage by selecting the power button. Auto throttle. Which will also disconnect. Auto throttle. And acknowledge. All right, standby display features. Uh, run through these real quick. Um, all right, so everything uh, will be uh, be up here on the display. So to set the barrel, simply press the button and then select the barrel value. Then the window will automatically close. Or you can press select and then press to close the window. For transitions uh, into flight levels, go to standard barrow 2992 by pressing and holding the barrow button. It will automatically select 2992. To select the different uh, nav modes available through the standby flight display, the menu button brings up the menu. The first thing you can do is press and select brightness. You can change the brightness setting Offset. Can dial that down. And back up for night flight as desired. Press to select. Other options available in the menu are course selection. So currently, the VOR with frequency 113.3 is set from the NAV1 radio. Press to select, and now we can dial the course. And I'll bring that up on my uh, screen down here. Where we would expect uh, approximately a 250 course to the station. As I move the course selected. Roger, we already contacted the them, uh, Delta 930. Selected course sliding across, that's the tail of the needle, and the head of the needle will come around as I get to 250 for what is selected today. So you'll notice that's the head of the needle selecting 250, and then the course deviation indication, you can see the blow up moving back and forth across the center of the screen. So 250 is course to the station with a two flag indicated on the top left corner. You can turn that mode, that display on and off by simply toggling with the nav, the selector in the nav position on and off and all of that information can go can be selected off. Uh, there is a DG mode available. If you select DG mode, then you can manually set the heading for an offset if you need to use DG mode. Barrow setting is available in both inches of mercury and hectopascals by simply selecting with the knob and you'll notice in the bottom right corner the selected value presented. Metric is also available for display. Metric displays on, illustrates altitude uh, in meters above the altitude in feet window on the altitude tape. So 
So, in the event of a uh, system fault that would require uh, attempted uh, resetting in flight, of course the AFM supplement will direct when this procedure is appropriate. The pilot, in the event of a fault flag on the standby flight display, can simply reach over to the standby display switch over on the lower left panel in the cockpit. I want to go ahead and select that off. When I select that off, the auto throttle and standby flight display will switch off. Now, in an in flight alignment, an auto throttle um, power up. The pre-flight test is not conducted since the engines are already running. So, selecting the standby power on now, we'll send the standby... Auto throttle. Auto throttle. We'll send the standby into an in-flight alignment. So, it'll take a few minutes. Uh, it's still in alignment mode. And once it's out of alignment mode, then we can maneuver the airplane. But while it's in alignment, mode, you need to maintain as straight and level flight as possible. And alignment is complete.